Hello, everyone. Welcome to Moments with Monica, a podcast where I engage in reflections on life, love, and learning. My background in early childhood studies is a lens that often shapes my views and reflections. I tend to understand the world as highly impacted by children, families, and individuals, as well as the policies, beliefs, and communities in which they live, love, work, and play. I see it as a reciprocal relationship. Join me in challenging and expanding my thinking through the help of others to live a more reflective life. You can find more of my work and what inspires me at monicaobermeyer.com. Let's get started, shall we? Before I begin my discussion today, uh, I think it was important to put a disclaimer right at the beginning so there's no misunderstanding. I think I'm going to be talking about a pretty sensitive subject. So... Today's topic is regarding child welfare agencies. Obviously, my experience is related to the agencies in my community, so it may not relate to every community, but I do see that there's a trend online. Uh, the laws around it may be different in each uh, jurisdiction, in each country. I don't really know beyond my own. But if you happen to work in an area like mine, then it is important that regardless of whatever I say, coming up, that you remember that you have a legal obligation to make a call um, to Children's Aid Society or Child Welfare Agency if you have any concerns for a child's safety. Uh, even if it is not the law in your area and you have a child protective agency, I would still encourage you to make that call uh, if you have any suspicions or you just um, have a feeling in your gut. In my experience, it's better to make the call and ask them if this is even something to call about rather than uh, carrying that with you and potentially not being able to support uh, a family. I know um, in the past I've had experiences where I have interacted with children and if you don't make that call, then those children move on, those families move on, and you are always left wondering. It doesn't leave you, especially if something that concerns you. So I do urge you, make the call, do your duty if it is your duty in your area, and help to protect children. Because we do know that um, not just child abuse, but child neglect can have a huge impact on a child's outcomes in life and on who they become and how they view themselves in the world. So I really do not advocate for not doing your duty. That's not what this is about at all. On the flip side, um, I do struggle. So that's what I'd like to talk about today is my struggle with child welfare agencies. Um, I actually don't struggle with making a call, particularly an inquiry call. So technically, and the majority of the times that I've had to call Children's Aid, oh, that's what we call it here in, in uh, Ontario, is Children's Aid Society. But most of the times that I have called, I've actually called to what we call make an inquiry rather than to make a report. So in my area, if you make a report, call to make a report, then you're obligated to file a report against a family. Uh, if you call to make an inquiry, you can run questions by the person on the phone about whether something even is something that you need to report. And in those cases, you don't have to give your name, the child's name, the family's name, any identifying information, unless it is determined that you need to file a report. So making the, the call and filing the report, those two things I'm actually not that uncomfortable with, just because I think it is such a part of my professional practice. I know that it's important and I um, truly believe that the impacts of abuse and neglect um, are so significant on a child's developing brain that I do make that call. What I struggle with is the system itself. Um, I hope that when I make a call that the system does 
what we hope it does and that it works the way that it should. Um, and in my belief that the way that it should is to help families to improve their practices with their children, to help families learn and grow. And sometimes just to bring awareness to families on things they didn't even really realize could have such a huge impact on a child. Um, in, in horrible cases, which are not as apparent as often as we would think, then I would hope that the agency would step in and find at least a temporary place for that child in a loving home that can be their support system, ideally with the intentions of reuniting the family um, once the parents got whatever support they needed, and if not reuniting, then to um, find that child another permanent loving family for the rest of their life. Unfortunately, that's not always what happens. Um, in my province, it's not very hard to find examples of it going wrong. Uh, before I started recording, I did a quick uh, Google search and all I put in was uh, child protective service failures. And there's way too many hits on Google, just way, way too, too many. Like there's no even quantifying one is too many. And the amount that has been recorded and the failures in the system is huge. Um, so one area where I really struggle personally is for, I guess, half of my career so far, I've worked in family support. But even when I was in childcare and even when I was in school, I kind of always knew that family support was more my focus than childcare. Um, I think it's because I believe that, well, it's a lot of things, but, and I, I could do a whole episode on it, but I do believe that families are so crucial to children and that kind of is where it stems from. So in working in family support, often the agencies that I've worked with have been primarily targeted to families with higher risks, um, whether that is uh, social isolation, newcomers to the country, refugees, young parents, parents with um, addictions, um, different different things that they would need support with and able to best support their children. And the problem with calling in these agencies for me is that they eventually find out you've called, obviously. Um, in an ideal situation, you would call with them if it's something you could um, encourage them to call with you so that you can maintain your trust with them because you, you can let them know that you know, I have a legal obligation to call because of what I'm seeing, but it would be better for you if we make the call together, because then it looks like you're part of the process of improving. That's not always the case. Um, depending on your relationship with the family, depending on the circumstances, um, you don't always have the option to do that. Even when you do, whether you do or you don't, um, there's a piece of trust that gets lost um, when you make that call. Families trust you to be their support network and you end up being the one who reports them to an agency that is not um, looked upon highly by families. They have a, a poor PR problem and there's a good reason. They show up at people's doors and um, families are scared of them. So when you make that call, you've broken their trust and you may be the only place they have support, particularly with isolated individuals, such as newcomers or young parents. Um, in my experience, there's other isolated individuals. That's just who I've worked with. So if it occurs that the call is made and 
they lose trust with you, then you've alienated them from the only safe place they have to fall. The only people who they go to with their crises and their struggles, technically putting their children at more risk. So that's one area where I really struggle. Um, because I know I may be making them feel more alone, more judged. And if CAS, sorry, Child Protective Services does their job well, that's okay that we have splintered our relationship, um, the agency or the company and the family, because then they should be getting um, more specialized supports. If it doesn't go well, then they may have no one supporting them. So that is difficult. That is more from my personal angle. And then there's the big problem. <laughs> That's not more from my personal angle. Um, the system here is failing. It's not doing well. It has been sick. It is sick. Um, don't get me wrong. There's times when I, I hope it has worked. Um, I would love to talk to anyone who has grown up with that influence in their life and seen it work because it would be not only encouraging to me, but it would be eye opening to me. Um, so if that is your case, please contact me. I would love to discuss it with you. Um, you don't need to tell me your personal story, but perhaps you would like to share um, some of your knowledge. Um, but from what we do see, it isn't doing well in general. Here we have an agency where an organization, we actually have several organizations um, based mostly on religion or race. Um, so different agencies deal with different people. Uh, I believe the hope is that they would be more responsive to those different circumstances and identities, though I don't know if that is even working. But nonetheless, these agencies have a sort of absolute power to go into homes and apprehend children without any form of due process. The problem lies in if we ha gave them due process, children would be sitting there potentially um, enduring horrible circumstances while we went through a very slow legal system. So that is why they have so much power because we have determined as a society that our children are so important and so vulnerable that we will step in without any sort of um, certainty. That creates a lot of judgment calls being required. Um, it can really be scary for families. I've, I've had families come to me after uh, Children's Aid has been in their home. And it's not my place to say whether they needed support or didn't need support or were at fault or were not at fault. But I can tell you whether the case was left open or closed, that has left a, a mark on a family of having someone show up at their door and the threat of losing their child. What doesn't help is that these are government related agencies, not so much so in that the government runs them, um, but so much so that they are part of our system and our system is based on very colonist practices. Um, these are embedded into our culture, these are embedded into our society, uh, and that means that this, these agencies often carry those beliefs with them. Where you see this in, in my area, in Ontario, is in the highly overrepresentation of Black and First Nation children being disproportionately removed from homes. That doesn't make sense. That just, it doesn't make sense. We have, um, they're not disproportionately part of our population. 
but they are disproportionately removed from homes. There's no way that it could be determined that people who are black or First Nations are just simply more dangerous as families. It doesn't make sense. So that those statistics alone tell us that there is a major problem. And then we have the problem of where children are sent. So in the cases where it's determined that the child needs to be removed from the home, and don't get me wrong, I do think there are times. Where these children are sent doesn't always work either. So we're removing them from potentially very damaging places, but then we're putting them in even da more damaging places. So we have the system of foster care where children are often bounced around. Children who go into foster care act out. Um, that's to be expected. Uh, they're going to push the boundaries because their world has been shaken up. And the more they're bounced around, the more they're going to act out because then they will slowly lose trust that anyone will be there consistently. So these children get bounced around from home to home with no stability and family that they can call their own, which has huge, huge impacts. In the more ideal situations, they go into family care. And that is always, um, in our, in my province, that is always the first choice, if possible, to go to a family member. But even family care hasn't been working out. So I don't know why that is, but somehow it has happened many times in the past that family care has actually been just as bad as foster care. Um... If you want some examples, you can stick it in Google, Ontario. Um, I don't know how you'd put the terms in, but something like Ontario uh, Children's Aid Family Failures. Um, and then when they are a certain age, depends on province, depends on uh, district, they will age out of care. That means that... The families that were supporting them or the individuals that were supporting them will no longer receive supports, nor will they receive supports. And maybe there's wonderful people out there, and I'm sure there are, and I don't want to discount that, who still keep that individual as a part of their family. But many don't, and many age out and have nowhere and no one to turn to. And we know this because adults and youth who have been through the system are speaking out. They're talking about the terrible treatments. They're talking about their experiences. They're talking about their post-traumatic stress disorder. They're talking about their lack of supports. And statistically, we are finding that they, they are having poor outcomes. So that's all not great. But for me, it's worse than that. All those individual children matter. All those people matter. All those family matters. But if they don't matter to you, that's fine, I guess. But it matters to us too. It matters to our society. We're not just giving children hard childships or tearing families apart. But we're creating adults who struggle. And we know that these struggles in childhood and adolescence, they lead to poor outcomes for our society, for the individual, which impacts our society. So we're, th we're talking about things like higher crime rates, more medical issues, um, increased addiction, poverty, homelessness, um, so much more. And we all pay for this. At least in my country, in Canada, we pay for a lot of this with our taxes. So we pay for jails, we pay for health care, we pay for social services. 
So even if for some reason you don't care about the people that are actually in these circumstances, about the lives that are affected, then care about your money. I'll hit you in your wallet. (laughs) Um, Because that money could be doing so much more if we had just taken time in childhood. We cannot change that now for the ones who have come through the system. We need to support those ones now. But the ones who are being apprehended today, we need to do better. It doesn't even make sense financially for us not to do better. These are adults who cost us more. We create them. We give them these ills. So we pay for them. Um, It's good for none of us. Our, Our children need better care. Our families need better support. Our communities need those children and families to be thriving. And then our world, I don't know what these children, individuals, adults, adolescents, what they could bring to the world, and neither do you. And so we all need these people. So we need to do better by them and for them. And I think it's important to point out, I don't think it's the fault of the workers. Um, The workers I have met are generally doing their best. They have a hard job, a job um, I will flat out say I don't want. Uh, I, I don't know that I can make those judgment calls and not be haunted by it. You need a strong, a strong stomach. You need to really believe that you are doing the best you are doing for that not to haunt you. The things that you see, the things that you hear, the, the decisions you have to make, it, it's, it's all very weighing. And they're doing so only based on other people's accounts, the feeling they get when they go into the home. Um, No actual concrete proof aside from if the child is physically abused, so then there would be marks. But even that um, may be hard, you know, that that brings a different kind of hard. And they have ultimately hard choices to make. They may be saving a child from something horrible, or they may be risking leaving a child in a situation that could be dangerous. They may be healing families or breaking families. I don't, I don't know how they do it. Um, And they're not completely powerful. The reality is none of us are completely powerful in some senses. And in that job, they are also impacted by a lot of regulations and policies and practices that are expected and intense scrutiny from the public. Um, so they, they work within that system. That's, it's not one, any one worker's fault or not fault. Um, I imagine they're doing the best they can. And I don't really have any answers of how to create a better system. I'm not so immersed in that agent, those agencies or that world, but I know it needs to be done. Uh, I don't know. I feel I need to help somehow. I don't know where or where my skills can be best put to use. Um, But I would love some advice if somebody has any, or if somebody is involved in making changes, I please reach out. I would love to be of assistance. The best I can do for now um, is kind of put this out there. Um, Because I believe the systems do need to change, not someday down the road, Not eventually, but today. And every day that it goes on the way it is, I think is too late. Because today a child was removed from their home. And today a a mom lost her baby. And a, a child was hurt, but mom had nowhere to turn to for support. Or a child aged out. Uh, with no family ties, 
to speak of. Or perhaps a former ward sits in a jail cell. Not perhaps, it's happening. Um, and today someone sleeps on the streets. So there's just too many to things happening right now at this very minute today. Um, and there will be many more tomorrows. So please uh, help me find a way to make a change. Reach out to me. Um, I would be happy to support. I'm just one person, but uh, I guess I'm a brave person because I've started this podcast and I've started a blog and I obviously don't mind scrutiny. Um, and all that's very depressing and I'm sorry for this second blog be, uh, podcast being very depressing. I didn't mean it for it to be. And I think despite all of that, it is important to remind you of my beginning disclaimer because ultimately, even though the system needs to change and the system needs work, you still must make the call. You just have to. There's no other option. You can't as an individual, you can help to change the system if that's something you want to do, but also as an individual, you need to protect that child and you need to do the best by that individual child and changing the system or waiting for the system to change does not help that child today. So the call is still required. You may save a child's life or hopefully a lifetime of hardships. And in many areas, it's your duty by law. If you see something, make the call. I was thinking I would give out the phone number, but I don't know how many people this was reached. So all you need to do is go into Google. If you have any concerns or you see something, then go into Google and type in Child Protective Services. And most areas, I would assume, have them. Um, I think that's it for today. Until next time, thank you. Thank you for joining me in Moments with Monica. If you found any value in this, please like, comment, and share this podcast. I would love for your feedback and to continue this discussion further. Feel free to stop by monicobermeyer.com or on social media to message me and share your thoughts. Thank you again. Let's change ourselves and the world around us together. Goodbye.